Hello and welcome to a new lab in this stm 2 h 5 MOOC. So this is another easy lab. So in this lab, we will learn how to uh, redirect printf to a UART. So this is always useful, you know, to have uh, such a functionality for debug purposes. So one important note is that you need to have done the previous lab, so which is, you know, the toggle LED on button press in order to do this lab, because we'll use the previous project as a base, you know, for this lab. The objective of this lab is to retarget the printf to a usart, so to display messages on a terminal. So usart3 is connected to the stlink v3 that is operating as a USB virtual com port bridge. So we'll use these two IOs, so PD8 and PD9, which have a time function usart3 in order to connect to the virtual com port of the stlink v3 that is on your nuclear board. So using the previous project that we had, you know, remember the toggle ID on button press, we'll open the IOC file, so which is, you know, the file for the stm 2 cubamx, so for opening the graphical interface configuration. And then we will uh, proceed to enable the usart on PD8 and PD9. So to do this, we'll go in the pinout configuration tab, connectivity, usart3, we'll enable the asynchronous mode for the usart. So that will be done here in the usart mode and configuration. And then in the parameter settings, we'll choose you know, the board rate, uh, the word length, and the parity settings that we want. Okay, so now we are back to stm 2 cube ID. So this is the first project that we were working on in the first lab. And now we'll open the IOC file. So this is going to open, so click yes to open the CubeMX you know, view, so the graphical interface. And this is going to load the IOC file. And we're going to come back you know, to the view of the pinout and we'll have the possibility to add you know, some new configuration to the previous IOC file that we had. All right, so in the pinout and configuration tab, open connectivity, then look for usart3. Okay, and now what we can do for usart3, we're going to choose asynchronous mode. And we want to select so PD8 and PD9. So look for PD8. Select usart3tx. And then same thing for PD9. And select usart3rx. Okay, so now we have the correct configuration for the IOs. We remapped, you know, to the uh, correct IOs connected to the stlink v3 virtual com port. And now we can complete the configuration of the usart3. So we're going to use actually the same, you know, values. So 115,200 votes. And then we'll have 8 bits of data, no parity, and 1 bit for stop. Okay, now the configuration is done. We can generate the code. So to generate code, as we saw before, there's different ways, actually. We saw one method, but there is different other ways. You can use this icon right here with the gear, you see, in yellow. So that's one way. The other way is like project generate code. And then uh, there is another method, which is just, you know, like by uh, saving your project. So by saving this, that will ask you, you know, like, so we, yes. And then it will ask you to generate the code. And now we can change perspective. So we are in the source code of the project now. The code has been generated. So we have the same messages as before. So yes, normally it's uh, good to do it, but in this case, it's not really a big deal. So we can just press yes. We can now add some code. So first thing in main.h of your project, so double click on it, open it, and we're going to add, you know, like a first uh, include for stdio.h. 
So again, you know, for the code to be added, we have, you know, like all the code to be added in the description of this video. So you can, you know, go there, copy and paste, otherwise you can just type yourself. Now open your project from the project explorer in the include, so core include main.h. And in the includes, we're going to add stdio.h. So in main.c, at the beginning of the file, for example, in the PFP uh, section, so you're going to add this definition for the put car prototype. So to redefine, you know, the IO put car. Scroll down, look for the callback function that we added in the previous lab. So it should be at the end right here. And we're going to add one line of code for printf. So the idea is every time we press the button, so PC13, we're also going to see this message on the terminal. One more thing, one last thing. So in the user code for section, we're going to add, you know, this prototype function right here. Now build the project. So project build all, or you can use, you know, the little icon here, the hammer, right? Make sure your board is connected to your host machine, to your system. So to my laptop here, you heard, you know, the board has been enumerated. So make sure you connected, you know, the right way, the connector one, which is connected to the ST-Link on your nuclear board. Now we can enter a debug session. So select the project and then enter debug session. Switch to a new perspective. So this is going to be a debug session now. and execute the code with resume icon right here or F8. We are going to use the command shell console inside the cube ID. So this will be used in order to look at the printf outputs. So you can use also, of course, any other terminals that you like, for example, Terraterm or Putty or whatever you use. It's fine. But here, I just wanted to show you that inside the cube ID, we have a terminal and we will learn how to use it. Uh, the important thing is, you know, in order to uh, select the proper uh, COM port, you will have to uh, go inside your device manager and find out, you know, which port and which COM, you know, has been uh, associated to the virtual COM port of the ST-Link V3 that is on your nuclear board. So as an example here, you know, like we're displaying uh, COM6, but of course, on your machine, it could be something else. So we need to know what is this number because this is going to be part of the configuration of the terminal inside uh, the kubeid later on. Okay, so I have a Windows machine. So in my case, I'm going to open Device Manager. And this will indicate to me what is, you know, the COM port associated to the virtual COM port. So I need to look into uh, the COM ports. So scroll down right here. As you can see on my machine, the ST-Link virtual COM port is COM43. So let's remember this. Now we're going to configure the convention console inside CubeID. So to do this, there is an icon you know, like on the lower right corner of your cube ID, an icon like this. Click on the little arrow, so the black arrow down, click on that, then select command shell console. This is going to open another window. Select for the connection type, the serial port. Then for the encoding, we can use the ISO 8859-1. And then we can click new. This is going to open another window. In here, you're going to give a name to your connection. So for example, here we give a name like H5 underscore serial. Then select the proper COM port associated to your ST-Link on your board. So remember, in my case, it was COM43. Uh, so that's what I'm going to select. And then select exactly the same configuration you did 
to, to your user three that you did inside you know the cube ID previously. So in our case, 115,200 boards for the board rates. Data size will be eight, parity none, and uh, stop bits will be one. Then you can click finish, and let's see what's going to happen. Okay, so follow my mouse. You see where I am right here. So this is the icon that we are looking for. Go right here, command shell, then select the serial port, select encoding 8859-1, and then new. Now give a name to your uh, you know, thing. So for example, we can give a serial H5, come 43 in my case. So for you, you know, it's going to change probably. Uh, then we'll keep this by default. Click finish. Okay. And now let's test, you know, this. So I'm going to press on my user button on my board. As you can see, every time I'm pressing on the button. So the blue button, user button, we have the callback. And then inside the callback, we have the printf printing hello world. So it's working fine. So now you can uh, stop the execution. So right there. And basically we are done with this lab. So congratulations on another lab completed.